Now, in a bid to improve the tracking and the speed of cargo shipment by rail, Rift Valley Railways, the operator of the Kenya-Uganda Railway, has launched a $9.3 million systems upgrade. Now, simply put, for that money, RVR will use GPS transceivers to control the movement of trains and cargo along the railway track from a central hub. The automated train warrant software allows pretty much anyone really at the main operations center in Nairobi to determine the exact location of trains along the entire track. It will also replace the manual management of crossovers at railway stations with a satellite-based track switch manager, which will automate the movement of the trains as well. Communication of the trains will be through onboard computers installed in all locomotives, which will have remote speed controls. Those computers as well can send back information on the condition of locomotives and the track as well. We uh, bring a, a very new technology that we are uh, to control all our assets that we have uh, in our company. So basically, we are installing in the, our locomotives uh, an onboard computer that is connected by uh, GSM or satellite communication to connect all the, 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 the trains that we have along the line and control and plan better the movement of the trains. And attaching the trains, we have all the, uh, the wagons that we have in that train. So we can control uh, not only the, the locomotive, but even the wagons that we have attached and improve our, our delivery process for our customer. Now, let's get a little more insight into what's happening with the Rift Valley Railways. Brown and Dego is Executive Vice Chairman of that company. He joins us now live in studio. Mr. Ondego, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, Rift Valley Railways is in a fairly interesting position here because Kenya has announced plans to raise about 20 plus billion shillings through a consumption tax, uh, consumption tax to build an entirely new standard gauge rail line from Mombasa all the way through to Uganda. Now, once complete, how will that rail line affect RVR's business? Oh, thank you very much, Rama. Uh, not really. It really won't affect us because uh, we have a 20-year concession. We have gone about seven years into that concession, and it is a continuation. And in fact, uh, when we did the deeds of amendment somewhere in 2010, the fact of the bringing in the standard gauge was recognized. And in recognizing that, we agreed a formula which allows RVR to continue with its business and uh, to have an option to move to the standard gauge. Standard gauge is the way to go, of course. Uh, uh, it's a question of the timing. Perhaps that's the only debate we can have. But uh, long term, if you look at the meter gauge, people have moved, many people have moved to the meter, out of the meter gauge. But the meter gauge still operates and still can uh, service the, the regions very well. So yeah, we have, a, we have a formula that will move us into the standard gauge. So we'll continue with our business on the standard gauge. Uh, as among the other operators because the standard gauge is envisaged to be an open access system. So it, does, it will not really affect our business. We'll just continue uh, our business as it's usual. At the moment as we are continuing, we will continue to invest and we'll continue to improve as you've just said. Right, Mr. Ndaga, let's talk about some hard numbers here. Cargo and passenger throughput between 2007 and 2011 have dropped by about 30.7% respectively. So given the developments, especially with the standard gauge rail, plus the fact that your market share on cargo throughput has declined, how will RVR become profitable by 2015? Uh, well, one needs to look to put it in context and look at the amount of uh, investment that was required uh, prior to the concessioning, maybe for about tw uh, two decades. No investment had gone in the permanent way. No investment had gone into the rolling stock. No investment had gone into even the technological improvements that you've seen with the ATW, the automatic warrant system software that we have recently installed. So the line was in very bad shape. We didn't get our first disbursement until 29th of July 2011 is when we started going out to the market to buy spare parts for locomotives, wagons, lucky enough, we could get some locally. Uh, and then we had the issue of uh, locomotives. We did find that these locomotives, most of them were 25, 30 years old, the locomotives that we inherited. They had not gone through a four-year service, eight years mandatory overhaul. So what we found is as we went to the market in January 2012, the lead times that we were given for spares were something like 52 weeks, 72 weeks, and even going to 100 weeks. So it has been slow coming, but as I speak to you now, if you come to 
uh, our, our warehouses and come to our workshop, you'll find the spare parts are completely kitted. So we've been delayed in terms of uh, getting motive power, which was very low. The line, lucky enough, we were able to get the rails a bit early. We finished uh, the Mombasa Nairobi section, about 73 kilometers of that. And that was to bring it back to the original design speed. So mm -hmm. because of that and the lag in getting spare parts, we were rather slow in terms of uptake of, uh, of cargo. So that's why you notice our... Uh, you notice that uh, the, in traffic terms, traffic, our volumes went down. But if you look at passenger services, the only line that we don't run is to Kisumu because of the issues we have in Kisumu with the viaducts that are uh, vandalized. But between Nairobi and Mombasa, we've continued to grow. That is a, a good growth there. But the most important growth is you look at the passenger services, commuter mm -hmm. services around Nairobi. We've grown from 3 million people per annum to last year we did 7 million people. Mm -hmm. So there, there's been a trajectory growth in terms of the passenger services and the commuter services that we've been running. Right, so let's, let's, let's talk about relations with yes. some of your main shareholders, specifically the Kenyan Transport Secretary and the Principal Secretary under him. Both mm -hmm. are very, very critical of RVR's operations at their confirmation hearings. So do you have any plans to repair relations with the Kenyan government? I wouldn't say repair relations because those repair relations haven't broken down. As far as we are concerned, yes, we've heard what the, the reports that have come out in the press. We will be hopefully engaging with them soon just to take them through the kind of investments that we've made. We have put in the ground about 90 million US dollars today, as I speak to you, which has actually not even come into, in, into the public domain. We, we are consistently and systematically uh, investing, upgrading. So we hope that when we do tell them our side of the story and they come to appreciate the work that we've done, and the backlog that we are dealing with, because I don't think uh, it is, and it must be true, that people do not understand, perhaps the government, the public, the customers, and the publics as a whole, we do, they do not understand the magnitude of the backlog in terms of uh, repairs, maintenance that we were dealing with. The backlog was so heavy that, uh, but the good thing is looking forward, is we've got a grip of it, we know exactly what needs to be done, and we know exactly where we need to go. Mm -hmm. So I think when we come to really give them these numbers and show them on the ground the investments we've done, uh, I, I think they will come to start to appreciate exactly where we are coming from and where we are going. Indeed. We'll have to leave it there, unfortunately, Mr. Ondego. Fascinating conversation. I wish we could take it further, but we certainly will at a later forum. Thank you so much for your time this evening.